Aloha, I'm State Representative Cindy Evans and I represent on the Big Island, North Kona, South Kohala. Thanks for being with me today and today we are going to talk about Hawaii invasive species and I have Josh Atwood who's the coordinator of the Hawaii uh, Invasive Species Council. Hi! Yes. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, at the legislature we're always talking about invasive species and as you just mentioned before we uh, started this show, uh, there's this bill on brown tree snake, which is just one of many bills and many um, initiatives that we're hearing about this session. And I think with this time that we have, this session, I think we'll talk about different initiatives, different bills. Um, but before we get started, I think the audience would love to know more about the Invasive Species Council and, and about you. Sure. All right. Um, so the Invasive Species Council was created by statute in 2003. Uh, it originally came through as Senate Bill 1505, um, which includes some of my favorite uh, language from a preamble ever, which is that um, the legislature finds that the silent invasion of uh, Hawaii by invasive species is the single greatest threat to uh, Hawaii's economy uh, and lifestyle and the well-being of its citizens. Um, so from that Senate bill uh, came Chapter uh, 194 of the Hawaii Revised Statutes, which establishes the council and dictates uh, who is part of it. So the council is designed to be an interagency group that's composed of uh, six state departments that are voting members, including uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Health, Department of Transportation, Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, and the University of Hawaii. Uh, in addition to those six voting members, there are a number of state departments that uh, participate in discussions so that they can have a voice as well. Um, so we have the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, uh, Department of Defense, and uh, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, as well as um, eight uh, state legislators. There's a senator and a representative from each county that participates uh, in our meetings or is invited to come to all of our discussions. So it's a great group for um, bringing together different state departments to discuss an issue that is so pervasive that it doesn't affect just one area of life. It's not, invasive species couldn't be addressed just by DLNR uh, or just by DOA. It's um, such a broad impacting issue that all those departments have to come together to discuss it. So it's a great idea and it's been functioning now for uh, eight years. Uh, we have some really good participation. How did you get involved personally? I mean, it's always nice to know the person that's, I mean, your passion. Tell us a little about you. Sure. Um, so my background is that uh, I'm from Maine originally, um, but uh, I love Hawaii since the first time I came here in 2004. I was working with a national organization that did community service programs. So I led this um, Hawaii-themed community service program where students uh, in high school from around the country would come to Hawaii and participate. Um, in field work, including invasive species control. Um, so that was my first brush um, with the conservation community in Hawaii. I came back with the same company to lead another trip in 2006, uh, and then I went into graduate school um, to get a doctorate in um, biology and environmental science. Part of my uh, graduate experience included a funded externship to do work uh, outside of um, my graduate school, which was um, in Rhode Island. And so I used that opportunity to work with the Bishop Museum here in Honolulu and um, the Oahu Invasive Species Committee. Um, the uh, Oahu Invasive Species Committee, or OISC, partners with the Bishop Museum on a project called Oahu Early Detection. Um, and they um, are a group that assesses um, incipient plant species, ones that aren't well established yet but have the potential to become invasive. And so what they were working on was a multi-year uh, roadside survey to identify and then um, plot geographically where these potentially harmful plant species were. So I came out and worked with that group uh, for four months and sort of learned about what issues they were dealing with uh, and did some outreach work for them in the conservation community. And that was the first time that I heard of the Hawaii Invasive Species Council. So after that internship was over, I went back to the East Coast um, but it was really just a matter of time until I finished because I knew that I wanted to come right back here and work. So 
Luckily for me, um, when I finished my degree, um, this position coordinating the council was open, uh, and I came right back to work here. Well, it sounds like you have a wonderful background for it, but I think more important is the stories about there's a lot of jobs and potential opportunities in conservation, natural resource management. Um, what is your take on, you know, I mean, a lot of people are watching the show and they maybe have nieces, nephews, children. I mean, there must be opportunity. Do you see this field, a growing field, an area that we should encourage our children to consider? Most definitely. Um, it's a field that I think when times are tough economically, um, the opportunities shrink um, as they would in any field. But um, because Hawaii is uniquely um, sensitive to environmental concerns like invasive species, um, there will always be jobs here that are focused on protecting Hawaii's environment. And so I think that it's a field that um, as we're faced with more issues and as the economy recovers, it's definitely um, an area where I would hope to see more job growth and more people getting involved. So for people who are wondering you know, what fields um, their children should go into, yeah, I would say environmental concerns is a great place to put your energy. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. definitely need the help. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this Invasive Species Council is administratively attached to our State Department of Land and Natural Resources. That's right. So even though it's an interagency group, um, it has to be housed within one department or another for administrative purposes. So I sit within the Division of Forestry and Wildlife at the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. Have you found um, that you're getting a lot of what would we call it, momentum this session on issues surrounding invasive species? Are you a little concerned that there's a few out there that are really gaining ground and, you know, if we don't intervene now that by the time we intervene it is too late? Yes, there are definitely some species that I think are out there gaining ground and they're at that critical point um, that Koki Frog on the Big Island might have been at, say, 10 years ago, where you have this opportunity with a small isolated um, population or set of populations that you could deal with, um, but if you lose that opportunity to act, then the species becomes more established and um, control and eradication become more costly and um, less likely to succeed. So there are a few that uh, are at that point now, including axis deer on the Big Island. Um, that's a recent discovery that um, axis deer have been moved from um, Maui and Molokai over to the Big Island. And there are um, populations there that we're hoping can be controlled beca before it becomes um, established there. So I think that that has spawned um, some action this legislative session, including a bill from Senator Kahele that would put additional um, restrictions um, on, oh yes, so this here is an, uh, a photo of an axis deer on the Big Island. This is some of the first evidence actually um, that we have um, that shows concretely that there are deer there. Um, this is taken with a motion camera um, and so the deer are um, very skittish as a species and so they're hard to um, track down and document. So um, having motion cameras set up without people there accompanying them is a great way to document their presence. So this is one of the f first photos of axis deer that we have um, and from here we're hoping that we can um, start to monitor where the populations are and then put together a successful management plan. Mm -hmm. And why? Why? I mean obviously axis deer is hunters, it could be a game sport, but mm -hmm. What, what did they do to the environment that we have to be worried about? So axis deer are actually um, classified as a game mammal on certain other islands like Maui and Molokai. People hunt them uh, and use them for meat. Um, and the Department of Land and Natural Resources um, works with hunters to um, try to control those populations at a manageable size. But on the Big Island, where um, that species was not present before, um, there are a host of environmental issues that would be new to that area. Um, deer are ungulates uh, or hooved animals and so like feral goats or feral pigs um, the problem that they pose for the environment is that their uh, hooves tend to disturb the uh, upper la layer of soil um, so there's um, they browse plants back and then um, native plants have trouble regenerating because the soil is disturbed so I think actually I brought an image today um, that shows the difference between um, a fenced area 
uh, in a non-fenced area and the damage that ungulates can do. Um, basically, when you have an area that's free of ungulates, you have a healthy native forest um, that's regenerating. Um, and if there are ungulates in that area, then the plants aren't able to grow um, back after disturbance. Um, and if anything, um, disturbance tends to favor fast-growing uh, invasive weeds. And so they can actually um, promote the growth of um, non-desirable plants. Mm -hmm. So ungulates are hoofed animals, and we have, what, the pigs? Mm -hmm. the, we even have, um, don't we have cattle that, that are wild? that might be out there? Yeah, um, I think that's, um, you know, in terms of numbers, less of an issue. But um, yeah, cattle are, you know, definitely a species that can cause um, issues if they're outside of uh, agricultural areas. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the goats, mm -hmm. which is a big issue, at least right. on the big island where I'm at. We have a lot of goats as well as turkeys <laughs> everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and mouflon sheep as well, uh, that's another species that um, is present in large numbers and um, disturbs soil because of its mm -hmm. hooves. Mm -hmm. So does your council work with hunters? Do you work with uh, ranchers? Do you, I mean, obviously from what you've said with the Department of Defense, that's a huge landowner or someone who controls a large piece of land. So they need to be at the table mm -hmm. because they're land managers. So I can see why they would be there. Right. Um, but what about the, the bigger ranching and cattle and, and the landowners around the state? Where do yeah. they play in on this discussion? They would certainly be welcome to participate yeah. in our discussions. I think historically we have not had um, a lot of interaction with the hunting community, um, perhaps because our meetings have been um, focused in Honolulu where the council members are working. Um, it's difficult for us to um, interact on a face-to-face -face basis with um, the hunting community across the state. Um, so one of the things that we're hoping to do in the near future is um, have a council meeting that's outside of Honolulu. Um, hopefully later this year we're going to have a meeting on Maui specifically to uh, work with the Maui County Council um, and to um, engage with the Maui community to talk about access deer on Maui. Um, there, uh, it's an issue of not eradication necessarily because there are so many deer on Maui, but instead um, trying to find a long-term management plan that would keep them at um, a population size that um, allows us to minimize negative impacts such as um, deer crossing roads and causing accidents um, or causing uh, large-scale agricultural damage. Mm -hmm. Well, that leads me to ask, as a policymaker, you know, we're talking about the council being attached to the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Division of Forest and Wildlife. And yet, at each county level, they have their own specific issues. But when it comes to really tackling the problems, doesn't it need to be done at the community level? If it has to be done at the community level, where does the state really, what responsibility they have, or should we be engaging more with county government, the council, and saying, we know you got a problem, but it's close to home, and you know, come on, you know, county, we need to, you know, have you step up to some leadership position, but where's the, what's the relation between the county and the state? Because, you know, if you just say the county would say, well, it's a problem, but we're gonna wait for the state to solve it, well, you know, we have very limited resources, Mm -hmm. That's a very difficult thing. So tell me a little bit about these dynamics between, you know, the state and the county and, and, and how do we do it at the local level? Right. Yeah, the relationship between the counties and the state uh, obviously has to be a positive one um, for invasive species efforts to succeed. And I think Maui County provides a really excellent example of that. Um, the initiative to put together a long-term management plan for access deer on Maui was initiated um, not by the Invasive Species Council at the state level, but by um, the Maui County Council. And then um, they submitted a request to the statewide Invasive Species Council to provide some assistance in developing that plan. So that's a process that we're working on now. Um, and we have representation from the Maui County Council um, at Invasive Species Council meetings. Uh, and also within um, the Invasive Species Council has four working groups that uh, are comprised of members of the public and conservation organizations. And the Maui County Council has been um, interacting with those working groups as well. So we would like to see a better relationship uh, with the counties um, outside of Maui, but I think that provides a really good example of what that relationship could look like. Mm -hmm.